Praise the Lord. I got two microphones. I'm just kind of like don't know what to do. <laughs> I'll use the main mic. Praise God. Well, I have just a little bit I'm going to share with you guys. How many have already been touched by the Lord? It's already been such a good service. And, um, man, I'm just so excited. If we could have a little bit of house lights so I can see everybody for just a minute. If you did not receive a communion cup on your way in, would you raise your hand? And a couple of the team members will walk around and make sure that you get one um, because we are going to receive communion. We're doing it backwards. You know, I was going to do communion first and pray, but, you know, hey, right? We just like to do things backwards around here. <laughs> I just want to share briefly, can we do that? And then we have a great closing of our worship night tonight. But um, uh, we recognize today as Passover, we know it's not the exact day and all of that, but we, I love to make it a part of our Holy Week. Um, it's such a great time that we can honor God, amen, to really start off Palm Sunday and then give Wednesday to him. And so I'm just going to share a few scripture verses just to kind of build your faith tonight, and then we're going to receive our communion together, okay? So if you'll open up your phones... <laughs> Some of you have Bibles. That's okay. I'm guilty myself. <clears throat> but to Exodus 12, verse 5. And, of course, we all know uh, the story. And I'll let you all get the communion cups passed out because you're talking more than me. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, so we know that uh, what I'm going to share tonight may not be new to you, but... I hope that it provokes our faith, amen, just to remember what the word of God has to say. And so in Exodus 12, where I'm going to read tonight, um, we're getting up to the plagues that were coming against the children of Israel. Uh, the ten plagues, if you don't know what they are, uh, started off with the blood in the river. I think right then and there, I'd have been done. How about all of you? I'd have been questioning God just by all the water turning blood. Then they had the frogs and the lice and the flies and the diseased livestock, boils, locusts, dark. Darkness. And now we're coming to the death spirit. And this is where God is going to show us in the Old Testament his beautiful love and his grace. How many are so thankful for that? So thankful. So this is where the Passover has been instituted. And these first few verses that I'm going to share with you is going to be instruction. How many of you know God will give you instruction, but then he requires obedience? We can get the instruction from God, but the miracle happens when we obey him, amen. And so in um, chapter 12, we're going to start in verse 5. He's just instructing them. It's a long story. We're just going to pick some pieces out of it. But it says he required them to get a lamb, a pure, perfect lamb. He said, your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, verse 7. And they shall take some of the blood, say blood. And put it on the two door doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat. In verse 12, and God gives this promise, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborns in the land of Egypt. Both male, man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment for I am the Lord. I don't think I would have survived very long in the Old Testament. I'm so thankful for his grace. But verse 13 says, now the blood shall be a sign. There's the power in the blood of Jesus. It's the blood that heals us. It's the blood that delivers us and frees us. It's the blood that restores us, amen. It's the blood that breaks generational behaviors. He's trying to show you that it's the blood that will set you free. It's the blood that shall be assigned for you on the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. In verse 14. So this day shall be to you a memorial. He's setting up the picture of the blood and the cross and the communion that we're going to see, we're going to do in just a minute. That the communion we do, he says, do in remembrance because it's a memorial of this covenant of the Passover lamb. That the blood was applied and because of the blood, God will pass over that house with protection. He said, but I want you to make it a memorial to me. And that word memorial means this. It means a place of remembrance. Do this in remembrance. It means a written record. But also it means it's a setup for the next generation. 
So whenever you see in the Old Testament where a miracle took place, they would set up rocks, wouldn't they? And they would build a memorial so that the generations that would come behind them would see that memorial and go, what is the miracle that God did for them? Because there's a memorial here. So he says, I want you to have this memorial, you have this memorial, in verse 14, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Why do we receive communion? Because it's a memorial. It's remembering what he did at the cross. It is written, amen. Whatever you have need of of your life, it is written. It is bought by the blood of the lamb. No works can make it happen. No super religion can make it happen. No feeling good about yourself can make it happen. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the memorial of what he did for us on the cross. And what did he say? You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. The blood never runs out. The blood is never a dead end. It's never a place, well, we did it in the Old Testament or, or we did it two years ago. No, we apply the blood today. It's an everlasting covenant. That's why we did 30 days of receiving communion, not to be religious and, well, let's have something special happen. It's to build a habit of remembering the Passover lamb and that blood of Jesus. When, when you receive communion, you're bringing to remembrance the promises of the word of God, that there's there's nothing I could do that could manifest that in my life. It better go through the cross or it's never going to happen. So in verse 21 is now where obedience comes in. He gave instruction and now what happens? Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, pick out and take lambs for yourself according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel, which is the top of the doorpost, and the two doorposts, which is the side, which is the cross, with the blood that's in the basin by the perfect lamb. And none of you shall go out of that door of his house until morning. Verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house. Woo. What does he want to do? He wants to strike you. What's that word strike me? The enemy comes in our life. He wants to push you. He wants to push your buttons. You ever had the enemy push your buttons? He knows exactly which ones to push. He wants you to feel defeated. He wants to inflict sickness and disease. He wants to hurt you. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, when I come, I must see the blood on the lintel. And the blood, I will pass by and protect you from the devourer. What does that mean? I have a scarf here. Thank you, Elder Denise. Oh, praise the Lord. A double, a double whammy. Everything is covered by the blood of Jesus. When you pray over your body, you're putting on the blood of Jesus. It's a covering. It's a protection. When you're praying over your children, you're putting the blood of Jesus over their life. You're praying over your family members to come to Christ. You're putting them in the blood of Jesus. And when the devil sees the blood, he can't strike you. He can come and discourage you. He can try to, you know, make you feel worthless. He can make you feel defeated. But if we remember the blood and we step up to the blood, the blood is still screaming, isn't it? It's still alive and it's full of hope and healing. So it's the blood. He said, apply the blood. Verse 24, and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your son forever. What are we establishing? The memorial of communion. It's not just a religious tradition. It's remembrance of the Passover, that God saved his children. The, enemy, the death spirit killed hundreds of thousands of the Egyptians, but the children that stayed in the house, covered by the blood of Jesus, were protected. Now, I want us to go quickly to Isaiah, verse uh, 53 and verse 4. This is prophecy of Jesus coming on the cross. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. What is he, what is he born? He's inherited. That word means he inherited our griefs. What's griefs? It's our crisis. It's our anxiety. 
We prayed for many of you for anxiety tonight. He inherited that for you. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. What does that mean? It's a physical affliction. He, he, the Bible says that he borne them and he carried them. It was sorrows and griefs that he carried. He inflicted those griefs on his body. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities or our guilt and our sin. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. I'm so thankful for a covenant with the blood that heals my body, that restores my mind, that gives joy to me when oppression tries to come. Amen. It's the covenant of the cross. Everything goes back to the cross. And if he did it then, guess what? He's going to do it today. His word will not fail. The Bible says it will not return void, but it will accomplish that to which it was sent. So we're going to do this tonight. Go ahead and um, open up your communion. It's a little tricky. There's the first layer. Grab your bread. And then the second layer is your juice. <clears throat> if you're new doing this. Just anointed my Bible with juice. It's okay. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians to you. This is the institution of the Lord's Supper. He said, For I received from the Lord that which I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. What does that mean? It's fresh. It's unused. It's brand new. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So let's go ahead and we're going to pray and receive our communion tonight. Father, we thank you for your body. We'll just use our way for first. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken for us. We thank you, God, that we can receive this covenant tonight because of the Passover moment where the blood was applied. And, Lord, we receive your broken body and the stripes on your back for healing in our body, Father God. And we do this to give you honor. We do this to give you praise, Father God. And we glorify all that you are and none that we are, God. We just stand, sit tonight stripped of ourselves, but, Lord, empowered with all that you are. And we receive this tonight in Jesus. Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that heals us. We thank you, God, for the blood that just screams life to our bodies and health to our bones. We thank you. I just keep hearing the Lord say, my blood is seeking out your children. Thank you, Jesus. His blood is seeking out your family members in this hour. We thank you, God, that your blood is seeking out sickness and disease in our bodies and driving it far from us, Father God. We thank you that any torment and lie of the enemy, your blood is seeking that and destroying it in the name of Jesus. Father, we stand today and we thank you for your cross and the blood that was shed on that cross. We thank you for your amazing grace of our sins can be washed away and forgiven. And God, forgive us of our sins tonight. Forgive us of our failures and our shortcomings and our disobedience, God, and all of our carnal nature. We just ask you, God, to forgive us and cover us with the blood of Jesus right now. And we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take the next few minutes tonight, and we're going to pray together as a church. So I'm just going to ask you to stand to your feet. And we have uh, Pastor Chuck and Lori is going to come up. Bishop Pastor Gloria is going to come up. They're also, my mom and dad are going to share some things tonight. And we're just going to pray for this church to have the impact of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to believe God for your family members to come to Jesus. We're going to believe God for some miracle signs and wonders to happen at this altar. Because how many know it's not all about us? 
It's not all about us. So I'll start off in prayer. I'm going to pass it to, we'll just pass the baton, and I want you all just to be in agreement, okay? Father, we thank you for this time of prayer over this church. We thank you, God, that you have set this church aside for such a time as this. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you, God, that this church is a lighthouse on a hill that cannot be hidden, Father God. Let the light of your glory shine throughout this city. God, we call forth the prodigal sons and daughters to come forth in the name name of Jesus. Let them hear the call of the Spirit. Let them hear the call to come home in Jesus' name, God. Our family members, our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren are going to hear the voice of God, and they're going to come home in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're going to celebrate them. We're going to open up our arms to them. We're going to bring them back into the fold and love them back to life in the name of Jesus. We decree no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Lord God, we thank you, God, that you break all the power of the enemy, all deceptions and lies, and we cover them with the blood of Jesus, and they're coming and they're going. God, hem them in, hem them in from the north, south, east, and west. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My assignment tonight is to pray for the prodigal sons and daughters. Understanding tonight that the word prodigal doesn't mean, it doesn't have a, a positive or a negative to it. It simply means lavishness, overabundance. And the prodigal son, uh, he was overabundant in his sinfulness. I tell you what, we need to be overabundant in our love for the prodigal tonight. Heavenly Father, we lift up those ones, those sons and the daughters who are we call would call prodigals tonight. We lift them up, Lord, in their in you, Lord, you know. We know that we are we were filthy, Lord. We know that we were muddy. We know that we were without without uh, without any redemption, oh God. But we come unto you tonight and we pray for those prodigal sons and daughters that are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we will lift them up and, and we will also be prodigal fathers and mothers, Lord, in our lavishness and overabundance of love and return and bringing them back, O oh God. Lord, they need a love that they have never experienced before in their life, oh God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a prodigal father also, God. That you are overabundant in your love for us, oh God, that we've already experienced. You are overabundant. You are lavish in your love for us that brought us back to the kingdom. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that there will be an overabundance of fatherly love and motherly love toward these sons and daughters that are, have not yet come back, but we see them afar off, oh God. And Lord, may our love run to them. And Lord, cover them. Hallelujah. Cover them be, before they even get to the house. Lord, we're calling them to be covered by your love, our love for them, even before they enter the doors of this place. Lord, because your love is so great, oh God, Lord, we're going to show them what the, the robe of royalty looks like. We're not going to wait for them to be cleaned up. Your word says, oh God, that the, the, the Father ran toward them and he had his servants put the robe on them even while they were muddy, even while they were dirty. Oh God, we pray that we will have a prodigal spirit of fatherhood, a prodigal spirit of motherhood that runs to them, oh God, and puts that robe of royalty on them and brings them to the house. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we need, we need them in our house, oh God. We long for them in our house, whether they be normal prodigal sons and daughters or whether they be spiritual sons and daughters. We desire for them to come into the house. And so we pray for that to take place. Lord, from now until Sunday, Lord, your spirit is drawing them. Hallelujah. We see them in the spirit, O oh God, and that we see them afar off, and we run in the spirit to them.
and draw them in. We put that robe of royalty. We show them what it means. They are still king's kids. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We run out to greet them. We run out to meet them. We run out to love them. And we embrace them before the shame can grab them. We embrace them before the pain, the heartache, the condemnation gets a hold of them. We run out to meet them in our prodigal love, our overabundance without measure, Lord. We see them coming in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Um, as I was praying today um, for the worship team and all of the musicians and the singers that are out there, I believe that God is um, just reminding us all that you know, the, the time that we spend in his presence is really what changes us. And he gave me a little phrase just now that said, learn to linger. Learn to linger in my presence. And I don't have a lot to say tonight. I just want to just come back to the simplicity of oneness with the Lord. Um, we we spend time in his presence and then we get to experience his glory and all the secret places in the world that each one of us you know when we take our little secret place in our prayer room or wherever that is the that is really what he yearns for he doesn't really care about anything else and these are the things he just showed me today he's just like you know all i want is you he goes, I just look and see, and I watch how busy you are. And, you know, you're, you're so busy. Why are you so busy? Just stop and linger. Learn to linger. So, Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that that word will settle in to each one of us, Lord, whether we're on the worship team or not. Um, I just want that simplicity to, to be understood. And, Lord, I just thank you so much that your word shows us exactly how the temple was built and how you equipped all the singers and you equipped all of the instruments and Lord it's it's very simple if if you call us just like Pastor Barb said if we read the word and we obey it then that's when the blessings come so we just ask Lord that you would just give us that simplicity of learning to linger in your presence so that we can receive new songs from heaven and that you will pour out a blessing that we will not be able to contain. And Lord, I thank you too that when we look at the cross, we can just rejoice. Whether, whether it, it, we understand it, we carry our cross every single morning. We don't carry it just once. We carry it daily. And he's wanting us to be remind us that we do need to carry our cross every day. Every day we need to stop and reflect on anything that's standing in the way of our usefulness to him and to others. And we want to be more like him. And the only way to be more like him is to know who he is and what he truly desires. And there were a few women here tonight that I prayed over and I could just hear him just saying, I'm dancing over you. I'm just dancing over you with my love. And I just want you to know that all the cares of the world, none of it matters. But being in his presence is the most important thing. So when you look at the cross and you see that he has died to himself, and he didn't have to do that. And another thing that he said to me, oh my gosh, this was so cool. He said... When you don't give me everything, the devil feasts on the leftovers. So give it all to me. Give it all to me. That's all I have. I felt so honored that my daughter asked me to pray for souls because it means so much to me. <laughs> I guess Lori's crying 
rubbed off, but I got saved in 1974, and everywhere I went, I'd wake up in the morning to those that know me, and I'd say, God, who can I win to Jesus? I still have that compassion in my heart. And before I pray, I just want to say that um, when we lived uh, here several years ago before we left, um, we moved into a new neighborhood, and I met an elderly couple that lived across the street, Emily and Ralph Strong. And I've led many people to Jesus. I've had that privilege, but this last one meant so much more to me because of his age. And I got to know them on some level. And um, as I talked to him, I always bring in Jesus, and he, he would say to me, but you know, I'm an atheist. I don't even, I'm not even agnostic. And I said, well, that's okay. Jesus loves you anyway. So within a year and a half, to make a, a long story short, I just began to love on that couple and just visit with them when I'd see him love on them. And he fell one day in, in his bathroom, and he wound up going to the hospital, and he broke his leg. And um, that's where God captured his heart because I would go up there, and I found out that he, his favorite dessert was banana cake with, with, <laughs> with walnuts. So I'd bring him that, and when he got home, I'd go over and I would love on him, and I'd bring him goodies, and I would tell him how much Jesus loved him. And then one day, and I would always say, are you sure, Ralph, that you don't want to accept Jesus? And one day he said, yes. And I asked him, yeah, yeah, it's so precious. And I asked him, well, Ralph, what happened? And he says, you did. He says, because you coming and loving me and being here for me all this time, and I saw Christ in you. And I got to lead him to Christ, and he passed away of about six months later and I know I'm going to see him again so the greatest privilege family that we can have is to honestly see the darkness in people's hearts because I believe that we're living in a time of our own pain and insecurities that it becomes about us and I understand that because I'm battling my own us <laughs> I know that feeling but the bottom line is look to others because all we have Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. And that's just the Jesus, to know that you're going to bring someone with you to the through the cross of Jesus Christ is the greatest privilege and the greatest joy. So as I pray, I really pray that, that you'll find in your heart that every one of us can minister to someone. And it's not by just door knocking. It's about listening. And they will, people, because of Christ in you, they will gravitate to your heart. And you will hear them say, they'll have a need. And that's where you go in and say, listen, I've been there. I know somebody that's been there. And I will tell you something, Jesus is the greatest thing in the world. And, and no matter what denomination, no matter where you're at, can I pray for you? And if you don't want me to, can I just put a prayer request in? And that's been my approach since 1974. And it's been a good approach because it's the weapon, it's a secret weapon of the Lord to love somebody to life. And that's what the Lord told me 10 years ago. He said, you need to love people to life. And that means eternity. It's not just that, not just right now, not fixing their need now, but to love somebody to life and to bring them to heaven with you. So let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we're so honored to stand before you today in privilege that we could call upon your name for others. <laughs> this world needs Jesus so desperately. Help us, Lord God, to come out of the sh shadows and obscurity of our own lives and let us be able to say in the name of Jesus, we want to talk to you and pray that you will come and find Christ with me, that I can bring you there with me. Father, I just pray that you stir every heart in this house because we can't just pray souls be saved. But the Bible says in Proverbs uh, that winning souls is wise. When we win souls for Christ, it's a wise thing to do. It's a privilege and it's an honor. And Lord God, I pray that you stir the boldness on the inside of us. And where we think, well, I just it's too shy. I can't do it. But Father God, tonight I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will go into every person in this house. Lord God, to hear the sound of the cries of the lost in the name of Jesus. That you draw, Father God, in this last day with all the evilness 
us that's here, all the bad things that's going on in the world that you begin to draw people to the cross. There's so much confusion today, Lord God, of the cross because there's so many different religions that are calling on different ways to get to heaven. But Jesus, you said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man could come to the Father but through me. So I'm asking, Father God, that this house not only be a house of prayer, but a house that will go to the byways and the highways and compel them to come in, Lord God, and even see their need and reach out to that need and minister to that need. If it takes a month or if it takes two months, if we want one family to Jesus Christ in one year, we could say, God, they're with you, and we rejoice in their salvation, Lord. And we just lift up this world to you, Lord God, and draw them out of the darkness because where darkness is Lord God great revival is going to take place let us be revivalists in our hearts oh God let us be one that will march Lord God for salvation and for truth and righteousness Lord God let us take our stand as the house of God let us not just gather together and worship you, and we will and we shall, but let us be one that will march out of the four walls of this house and lead someone to Jesus Christ and have compassion and love for them and be persistent in what we do. And let us know, Lord God, that we're going to bring, when we die and we shut our eyes on this planet, that we have those that will be awaiting, celebrating us and thanking us that we took the time to love them to life and bring them into salvation. And I pray the peace of God upon this house. And I pray, Lord God, that the house be so filled with new souls that comes in. And that, God, we're going to love them. We're going to serve them. We're going to raise them up for the glory of Jesus Christ. And, Father God, knowing that this house has been planted on a firm foundation. This house wasn't a good idea. This house is a God idea. And it's went through the storms and it's went through the battles. But here we are standing tonight to declare the word of the Lord. Not just to our community, Lord God, but we're speaking it out into the heavenlies. And we're crying out in the name of Jesus for souls for Jesus Christ. Now we praise you and we thank you. I pray you bless every, every person in this house. Lord God, I pray that you give them every desire that they want that lines up with your word, that your hand be upon them, that the healing that Pastor Barb prayed for tonight with, with the communion, Lord God, is going to come to pass in their body because it is by your stripes that we've been healed. And we declare that tonight. And the enemy can't steal that from us. And so we thank you. And we praise you. And everybody said, amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to cry. I wish I could. I'm just not an emotional person. Except when I'm with the Lord by himself. But I am just, uh, you know, Pastor Barb asked me to, to uh, pray over, you know, that men would rise up and be everything they're supposed to be. That has been a cry in my heart for 50 years. If men could ever become like women, would be all right. The truth of it is they are. And it's sad what's happening in our world. Men are confused. Men don't know who they are. You know, I was thinking about this. You could go a whole bunch of ways with it, but I kind of narrowed it down just a couple thoughts I had in my mind. And You know, I'm a Keith Green fan. I love Keith Green's music. I've, I've got it all, had it forever. And uh, those that don't know him, you need to get his music. Very anointed. And he's written, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of songs, I'm sure. One of them is my favorite, and it's just very short, and it comes out of his spirit, and it touches me so much. Every time I, every single time I listen to it in my office, quietly by myself, I'll break out in tears because it's just so me, and I know it's most men. Most men feel this way because the times we're living, it's very difficult to stay on fire, 
really hard to do. But um, here's, this, here's the words. Just listen to these words. My eyes are dry. Think about that. My faith is old. My heart is hard. And my prayers are cold. And I know how I ought to be, alive in you and dead to me. But what can be done with an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you. Your spirit is love. Please wash me now with the wine of your blood. That, I just, it's like, it just grabs me. It's just, it is so prophetic. And it just, and it never gets old because if I had a show of hands, I don't care what kind of religious we put on when we come to church because we are at our best. But we know. We know we're dry. We know we're old. I feel like we just can't break through sometimes. And I've been saved so long that I've been through this process so many times. But I just want to tell you something. Even though we're going through a drought in your spiritual life, and I'll pray in just a moment. But after there's a long drought, this is what the Lord said to me. They say it takes about six or six to seven downpours of rain before the ground becomes penetrated again because it's so dry. Before anything can come back to life, that old crusty dirt needs a lot of water. And that's what you men need a lot of water water of the Holy Spirit I'm going to pray for the men in just a moment but men need to pick up their cross and follow him that was mentioned also tonight you need to pick up your cross and follow him it's a lost art in the body of Christ we need, we need to pick it up and follow him we need to be men of God one more thought was uh, I, I believe it was uh, Chuck that mentioned it service or two ago, I can't remember when, something about river stones, and it kind of jumped at me. And listen to this. River this is what the Lord shows me, because I want you to, just a little thing. Barb, Pastor Barb asked me to do this, so I'm just doing this by obedience. River stones have their origin in the river. You, you can't see river stones. That's why they're called river stones. They're in the river. So they have their origin there, but they find their identity when they're taken out of the river. So see, it doesn't matter how strong you feel as a man of God. All the fake, the, the facade we put on, you, you know what I'm talking about. We do it. And we want people to see us at our best, but you're dry thirsty you need more of God you can you need to be taken out of the river and put where you can be of use where you can be seen where your identity comes to life because every man of God that doesn't know who they are and doesn't really stand up strong they really don't have an identity in Jesus because when you do you, your, your life changes at that point so let's just ask these men to raise up, okay? Just, just, just lift our hands for just one minute, that's all. Father, we thank you tonight. We are so blessed of you. Thank you for all those incredible prayers a moment ago. Incredible people of God speaking the word of God. Lives being changed. Lord, we need our men to come home. We need our men to rise up. We need our men quit putting on that spirit of the world and say, I'm, I'm better than that. I could do better than that. I know I'm better than that because my identity is in Christ. And I thank you, Lord, for touching every man in this room especially, but even beyond this room, that you'll touch every single man of God who needs to be in this house of God to help this ministry be pushed forward in the future. There's a future in this house. We have to break out in song. There's a future in this house. There's something God is doing here. 
that is so unique and so wonderful and so awesome. And, Lord, you have brought together many leaders here in this house. Lord, you are planning something big, and we need to open our eyes and realize we need our men back in here. We need our men to come home. Men, we call you home. We, co we command you to get out of your self-pity spirit. We command you to get out of that dryness, out of that spirit you're, you're allowing to manipulate and control you. We command you in Jesus' name right now, devil, you loose every man of God, every single man of God that belongs in this house. You will no longer use them for your glory. God's going to use them for his glory, and we're going to bring them home so they can, their gifts and talents can flow like a river, and they can become those river stones, and their identity will be in Jesus and be a powerful move of God for what you're about to do. i thankful for the women. I love the women in the house of God. I love my daughter running this church like nobody could do, and I thank you for all that. But there are men that need to come in, men that need to come back, and Lord, we thank you for that, and we call them back in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, you can be seated. Go ahead. Man, how do you follow that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God is, God is so good. For Okay, for any of you that are first-time visitors tonight, praise God. Boy, you've got a, you got a lot to think about. We, we have these um, visitor's cards for you to fill out and put it in the offering, please. We won't bother you. we just like to get to know you a little bit and try us a few times. Don't just say one night, but try us a few times. Come on Sunday morning and, 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 see, what, and, and, and see what's happening. Amen. Well, I'm here to take the tithe and the offering tonight. I, I, I love that. And um, I want to, you want to go ahead and tie this and put that scripture up there for me, please? It's, wow, that's a little there. Here we go. Okay. So bring, bring, so, the, whoo, so bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And, and try me now. This, this says the Lord of, of hosts, if I will not open up the, the windows of, of heaven. Amen. He says, try him in this. I want I want to say this. When I was working on a, a, a lecheria, I mean, a milking place I always got a half half of a Holstein well Holsteins weigh like 1600 pounds so I got a half of them to to to, to eat and then my father-in-law give me a, would always give me a hog and I'd raise that well I'd, I'd always give 10 percent of, of, of that um, meat to my to my pastor I'd always go ask him what do you want hamburgers steaks what do you want and boy he was always getting excited because then I'd he'd know the bacon was coming too and so so, but I did, but I, but I always did that. In the houses that I build and sold, I never give 10% of that. God wants us to just, and, and we've never been, Debbie and I have never been hungry, as you can tell, and and, and God has always provided. And, I'll, and, I'll, and, and the word says, prove me, whoa, there was up there, it says, prove me now in, in this. There, there it is, it says, prove me now in this. And, and, God, and, and that God will keep those windows open for it. I guarantee it, in, in, in everything. And so I'm just, I just want to leave that with you tonight and get your offerings ready. I got, my, I got, I got mine ready. Amen. Yeah. I better, I better have it ready. Stand up here and talk about it. Huh? Yeah. They're not come up. Okay. What'd you say? <gasps> thank, no, no. Thank, thank God, my wife didn't get it. No, just no. Thank, thank you. <laughs> What'd you say? No, I did. <laughs> okay. All right. We're, we're going to pray over this. Father, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to, to prove you, Father, to give, Lord, and to, to be about your business, Lord, to be about tithing, Father, be about giving, to be about you know, being open to what you ask us to do. And, Father, we just thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us when we do this, Father. We just love you and we praise you, and we just know, as like was said tonight, that you, your word does not return void to us. And so we just send it out there, Father. And, and, and to provide everything for this house and for our houses, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. What a night. How many were so blessed tonight? Woo! I'm telling you, what a night. Just so many impartations and like motion in the spirit. It was so beautiful. While they're receiving the offering, um, something the Lord really impressed on my heart, and Chuck, actually, Pastor Chuck did a great message two Wednesdays ago about prayer. Um, the Lord really spoke to my heart about doing an eight-hour prayer watch. 
So we're going to plan a one-day, eight-hour prayer watch here at the church. Um, but we're also going to start gathering one Sunday night a month to pray. Our church has to be releasing prayer, amen. Just what we saw tonight, the power of prayer changes everything. My dad's message on Sunday, if you missed it, go listen to it. Because programs and all that is wonderful and I'm all about it. But if we don't have prayer, you don't have the supernatural. So that's what we're we need amen so that's coming and i'm super excited also don't forget friday night or friday is stations of the cross listen we had 150 people come through last year a lot of them weren't church members a lot worse so plan on coming out 10 a.m to 7 p.m it's a beautiful experience with the lord it, it you really have an encounter with god personally so come on out for that and don't forget sunday's easter so i'm going to put you all on an assignment pray away the rain did you see the forecast? I'm like, ooh, in the name of Jesus, speak to that rain, amen. We want a beautiful blue sky Sunday so we can celebrate Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the impartation that we received, God, from the beginning to the end of this night. Holy Spirit, just seal it by your blood. Enemy can't steal it, can't rob it. We pray a hedge of protection around everyone going home, God. Let what they heard just resonate and grow on the inside of them. Let it come alive and produce fruit. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen, amen. amen. I love you all so much. We'll see you sometime this weekend. Praise God.